You've seen hacking in movies, right? Someone in a dark hoodie, typing furiously, green text flying across the screen, accessing mainframes in seconds. It looks cool, super dramatic. But here's the thing. That's mostly just for show. Real hacking is a bit different. It's less about crazy speed typing and more about smart thinking. It's about understanding how things work, then figuring out how to make them new, sometimes unexpected things. So what is hacking really? At its core, it's creative problem solving. Finding their limits, their strengths, their weaknesses. Hackers love to explore. They poke around, they test boundaries. This isn't always about breaking into things. Often, it's about making things better or just seeing what's possible. It's a mindset, a way of approaching complex puzzles. Now, the word hacking often gets a bad rap. People immediately think of cyber criminals, data breaches, stolen passwords. And yeah, that side exists. We'll get to that. But hacking itself is a skill. Like any skill, it can be used for good or bad. Think of ethical hacking. That's using hacking skills to find security holes to help companies protect themselves. It's about building defenses, not tearing them down. It's a huge field in 2025. So you're curious about this world, you want to understand it better, maybe even learn some skills. And you've got an Android phone. Guess what? That device in your pocket is surprisingly capable. It can be your entry point into ethical hacking. This guide is all about that. How to start learning, responsibly. How to use your Android phone as a tool, without the Hollywood drama, but with all the genuine excitement of discovery. Let's dive in. When we talk about hackers, it's not a one-size-fits-all deal. There are different types. Think of them as wearing different colored hats. These hats represent their motivations, their ethics, how they use their skills. It's a simple way to categorize them. But it's pretty important, especially if you're thinking about getting into this. You need to know the landscape and decide what kind of hat you want to wear, or more accurately, what path you want to follow. First up, black hat hackers. These are the ones you see in negative news headlines. They break into systems without permission. Their motives are usually selfish, maybe for financial gain, stealing data, credit card info, or sometimes just for disruption, causing chaos. What they do is illegal, plain and simple. They exploit vulnerabilities for malicious purposes. This is not the path we're exploring. It leads to serious trouble, legal trouble, ethical trouble, just not worth it. Then you have white hat hackers. These are the good guys, the cybersecurity professionals. They use the exact same skills as black hats, but they use them for defense. They have permission to hack into systems. Companies hire them to find weaknesses. Before the bad guys do, they perform penetration tests, security audits. Their goal is to improve security, to protect data and systems. This is ethical hacking. It's a legitimate, in-demand career. And it's what this guide is about. And in the middle, gray hat hackers. This one is a bit more complex. Gray hats might hack into systems without permission, like black hats, but their intent isn't usually malicious. They might do it to expose a vulnerability, to show a company they're at risk, or just for the thrill of it. Then they might report it. Sometimes they ask for a fee. It's a blurry line. While their intentions might sometimes be good, acting without permission is still risky and often illegal. Sticking to white hat principles is always the safer, better bet. So, you've got your Android phone. You use it for calls, texts, social media, videos, the usual stuff. But that phone, especially here in 2025, is a serious piece of tech. It's a pocket-sized computer, and it has a surprising amount of potential for learning ethical hacking. You might not think of it that way yet, but it's true. Your daily driver can also be your learning lab. It's all about knowing how to unlock that potential and what tools to use. Think about the specs of modern Android phones. Multi-core processors that are super fast, loads of RAM, high-resolution displays, and importantly, a versatile operating system. Android is built on the Linux kernel. That's a big deal for hacking. Linux is the go-to OS for many security professionals, so your Android device shares that powerful foundation. This makes it more capable than you might initially realize for these kinds of tasks. One of Android's biggest strengths is its open nature. Compared to some other mobile operating systems, it's more customizable. You can sideload apps. For advanced users, there's rooting. Now, rooting gives you full control over the device. 
It can be powerful for hacking tools, but it also comes with risks, security vulnerabilities, voiding your warranty. For starting out, you don't necessarily need to root your phone. Many tools work without it. The best part? It's portable. You can learn and practice ethical hacking concepts anywhere, on the bus, during a lunch break. Your learning isn't tied to a bulky desktop. This makes it super convenient to dip your toes into cybersecurity. Your Android phone can become a powerful, portable toolkit for scanning networks you own, for running scripts, for understanding how digital systems communicate. It's a fantastic starting point for any aspiring ethical hacker. All right, it's tempting to jump straight to the cool hacking tools, the apps that promise to do amazing things. I get it. That seems like where the action is. But hold on a second. If you don't understand the fundamentals, those tools won't make much sense. Or worse, you could misuse them, even accidentally. So what basics are we talking about? Networking is huge. You absolutely need to understand how networks function. What are ports and protocols like TCP, IP, HTTP, DNS? How does data actually travel from your phone to a website and back? If you don't grasp these concepts, network hacking tools will just be confusing. Learning how devices talk to each other is step one. It's the language of the internet, and you need to be fluent. Next up, operating systems, especially Linux. As I mentioned, Android is based on the Linux kernel. Many hacking tools are designed for Linux. Understanding how Linux works, its command line, its file system structure, that's incredibly valuable. It will make using tools like Termux on your Android phone much easier. It also helps you understand how systems can be vulnerable. Knowing the OS is like knowing the blueprint of a building you're trying to secure. And then there are core security concepts. Things like encryption. What? What is it? Why is it used? Firewalls. What do they block and allow? What exactly is a vulnerability? How are they classified? What about malware, phishing, social engineering? Understanding these ideas helps you think like a defender. And to be a good ethical hacker, you need to understand what you're protecting against. So, before you download that first tool, commit to learning these building blocks. It will pay off, big time. Okay, you're ready to get a bit more hands-on with your Android phone. Let's talk about an app called Termux. This is a game changer for anyone serious about learning ethical hacking on Android. Termux is essentially a terminal emulator and Linux environment for your phone. It gives you a command line interface, just like you'd find on a Linux desktop and surprisingly easy to get started with. The great thing about Termux is that you don't need to root your Android device for many of its functions. You can install it like any other app. Once it's running, you get a blank screen with a blinking cursor. This is your command prompt. From here, you can install and run a wide range of Linux packages and tools. Think of it as a mini Linux distribution living inside your Android system. It really opens up what your phone can do. You can install programming languages like Python. You can run scripts. You can install networking tools like Nmap. It's your gateway to a vast ecosystem of open source software. For an aspiring ethical hacker using Android in 2025, Termux is pretty much an essential app. It's where you'll likely spend a lot of your learning time. So get comfortable with that command line. It's your friend. Once you're comfortable with Termux and some basic commands, you can start exploring networks. Your own networks, of course. Remember, ethical hacking means you have permission. So what does network exploration involve? It's like being a digital detective. You're trying to figure out what devices are connected to a network, what services they're running, and potentially what vulnerabilities they might have. This is a crucial first step in many security assessments. Network scanning is the process of actively probing a network to gather this information. You can use tools to discover live hosts. These are devices like computers, phones, printers, smart TVs, anything connected. You can find out their IP addresses. You can also try to identify what operating systems they are running. This information helps build a map of the network. It shows you what's there, what you're dealing with. It's all about information gathering at this stage. After identifying devices, you can look for open ports. Ports are like doors on a computer. Different services use different port numbers. For example, web servers usually use port 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS. 
An open port means a service is listening for connections. Knowing which ports are open can tell you what services a device is offering. This is key information. A scanner can check for common open ports across a range of IP addresses on your network. Once you know what services are running, the next step is often vulnerability assessment. This is where you try to identify known weaknesses in those services or operating systems. This doesn't mean actively trying to exploit them, especially when you're learning. It means using tools and databases to see if any of the software versions present have documented vulnerabilities. This whole process, discovery, port scanning, vulnerability identification, is fundamental to ethical hacking. It's about understanding the landscape before taking any action. Beyond Termux, which is your command line powerhouse, there are other Android apps. These apps can help you learn and practice ethical hacking. The key word here is ethical. We're talking about tools for learning, for testing your own networks, or networks you have explicit permission to test. It's important to choose your apps wisely. Get them from reputable sources and understand what they do before you run them. One popular tool you can often install via Termux or sometimes find as a standalone, be careful with sources, is Nmap. Network Mapper. It's a powerful open source tool for network discovery and security auditing. You can use it to find hosts, services, open ports, operating systems, and more. There are Android-specific front ends or ways to compile it in Termux. Fing is another well-known app. It's simpler, great for quick network scans. It can identify devices and run internet speed tests. You'll also find apps that help with other aspects of cybersecurity. Wi-Fi analyzers, for example. These can show you details about nearby Wi-Fi networks, signal strength, channels, security protocols. This is useful for understanding Wi-Fi security. There are also password strength checkers, educational apps that teach cryptography concepts. The goal is to find tools that help you learn, tools that demonstrate security principles in a practical way, not tools designed for malicious activity. A word of caution, the Google Play Store has policies against apps that could be misused for hacking, so some advanced tools might not be available there. You might find them on platforms like F-Droid or directly from developers' websites. If you go this route, be extra careful. Verify the source. Understand the permissions and app requests. Does a simple Wi-Fi scanner really need access to your contacts? Probably not. Always prioritize your device's security while you learn. We're talking about using your Android phone to learn hacking skills, but with great power comes great responsibility. Cheesy line, I know, but it's true. The legal and ethical lines in cybersecurity are very clear. Crossing them can have serious consequences. Jail time, fines, a criminal record, it's no joke. So understanding these boundaries is non-negotiable. Unauthorized access is illegal, period. It doesn't matter if your intentions are good. It doesn't matter if you're just curious. If you try to access a computer system, a network, an account, or any digital device without explicit provable permission from the owner, you are breaking the law. This includes your neighbor's Wi-Fi, your school's network, a random website. Don't do it. Stick to your own stuff. So what does explicit permission mean? It means getting clear, unambiguous consent, preferably in writing before you run any scan, any tool, any test against a system that isn't yours. If a company hires you as a white hat hacker, you'll have a contract, a scope of work. That's your permission. If you're practicing, use your own devices, your own network, or dedicated online platforms designed for safe legal hacking practice. Ethical hacking is about helping, not harming. It's about finding vulnerabilities so they can be fixed. It's about protecting data, not stealing it. It's about respecting privacy. As you learn, always keep this ethical compass in mind. Ask yourself, am I allowed to do this? Do I have permission? Could this cause harm? If the answer to that last one is yes, or if you don't have permission, then stop. There are plenty of ways to learn and practice without breaking the law or hurting anyone. So, you understand the ethics, you know the legal boundaries, you're ready to learn. But how do you practice these hacking skills safely? You can't just go poking around live systems on the internet. That's a recipe for trouble. The answer is to create your own controlled environment, a practice lab. This is your personal cyber gym where you can experiment, where you can break things, your own things, 
and where you can learn without any real-world risk. Setting up a home lab doesn't have to be expensive or complicated, especially in 2025. You can use old hardware, an old router you're not using anymore, an old computer. You can install virtual machines on your main PC. Software like VirtualBox or VMware Player, the free version, lets you run multiple operating systems on one computer. You can set up vulnerable virtual machines. These are intentionally designed with security holes for practice. Metasploitable is a famous example. Beyond your home lab, there are tons of online resources. Capture the flag, CTF competitions are amazing. These are ethical hacking games. You solve challenges, find hidden flags, and score points. Websites like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, and Vulnhub offer virtual labs and machines you can practice on legally. They have guided learning paths too. These platforms are designed for skill building, from beginner to advanced levels. They are invaluable for practical experience. Finally, remember that cybersecurity is a field that's always evolving. New threats emerge daily. New technologies change the landscape, so continuous learning is key. Read security blogs, follow experts on social media, listen to podcasts, and consider joining a community. Online forums, local cybersecurity meetups, sharing knowledge, asking questions, learning from others, it's incredibly helpful. The journey of an ethical hacker is one of constant growth, so stay curious, keep learning, and connect with others.